oxyacetylene torch 101. So this torch burns at very high temperatures. It allows us to cut steel if we want. We primarily only use it for heating in here. We do use it for some cutting, but normally the plasma cutter or the plasma torch is our weapon of choice. I want to just go over how it works, how to set it up, how to use it a little bit in case there's a project we would need to use it for. In this case, what we want to do here is bend this rod into a handle for a shield. Okay? The problem is the diameter of the rod is actually larger than the diameter or equal to uh, than the bender. So what would happen is these would bend potentially before this would. Now a little inside track. These pins right here are hardened steel pins. They're very tough stuff. This one is just a mild steel pin. It's actually the same material. We had to replace it because it got lost. So it's the same hardness as this stuff. And if you put one against the other, if the other has leverage or mechanical advantage, it'll bend that. So what we're going to do is heat this up and make it easier to move. Heat makes things happen, especially with metal. It makes forming and bending much easier. So in order to get our torch lit, here's the procedure or process. Uh, I've got the, ox the acetylene valve open. That's the red line. That's the very flammable stuff. I have the oxygen valves both open on the torch head. Okay, this is a cutting torch head, but a heating torch is very similar. I'm going to turn the acetylene on a quarter turn, just until the gauge comes up. And the reason for that is, this stuff's really volatile. It means it's highly explosive, so I don't want to have a lot. If I have to turn it off quick, I need to do that, okay? Then I'm going to adjust this gauge, this works the same as your gauges, to between 3 and 5 uh, cubic feet per minute, which is not cubic feet per hour, which is not a lot, it's very little. I can hear it coming out of there. I can also smell acetylene. It smells, it's got this weird funny smell to it. Okay, I don't know how to describe it, but it's acetylene. If you ever smell that, um, you want to shut it off. It smells like acetylene, I don't know what it smells like. It's kind of like when they put rotten eggs in, um, yeah. in uh, natural gas, okay? So once I've got the pressure set, I'm gonna turn the acetylene valve off temporarily. I'm gonna do the same thing with the oxygen. I'm gonna turn this on. And you can hear the oxygen hissing out. And when I hit the whammy bar or the cutting bar, I get even more coming out. I'm going to adjust this between 20 and 30. And then I'm going to shut the oxygen off right here. Next thing I do is light the torch. The first thing I light is the acetylene. There's going to be a flame here. So I turn the acetylene on. Make sure that this is in an open, neutral space. Skinner's flammable shorts look like a good target. Mm -hmm. Use a striker. Ooh. Boom. Awesome. I got a little bit too much acetylene, so I'm going to dial this down. I want to bring it back just so it's uh, where it's smoking. I want it to stop smoking. I opened it up a little bit. I don't want it pulling away from the tip. That's too much acetylene, so I'm going to dial it back. Right there, okay. Now I bring my oxygen on until I get a neutral flame. Oxygen comes on and it gets blue. I want it just go until I get those sharp points like that. I don't want it to hiss at me. Too much oxygen. And I don't want it to just be a cone. I could use that, but it's not quite as hot. So about right there, okay. I now have a neutral flame for heating or for cutting. I can add extra oxygen and it'll burst and blast through there, kind of like the plasma torch. Blast through. I'm going to get my mittens on here. I got to put those on. And where did that chunk of metal go that was on the vice grip? It's in Wyatt's hands. Who knew? Wyatt's hands. That's fine. He was, he was just fidgeting. I'm going to hold on to this. Now, where to hold it, there's an obvious handle, but a lot of people hold it by the knobs. And if you do that, you'll adjust these without knowing it. So, hold it right here, or down here, okay? Now, I'm going to heat this up. And then, once I, once I get a red heat on it, there's my mark. It's going to take a little bit because it's fairly thick. It'll start to change colors on you. You want to zoom in, Ethan? Good stuff. And it's going to go through all these series of colors from like dull orange to bright orange to what's called cherry red. And if you've heard that expression, cherry red, that's right, pretty much, uh, there's a certain temperature range that that'll be in when it's that color. And blacksmiths or people that do this every day can actually, they know what temperature it's at and they know where they want it to be if they're going to work with it. I'm just going to keep rolling this and heating it evenly. It's probably about 800 to 1000 degrees, the metal is. The flame is like 2500 degrees. 
you can see when it gets that bright orange, it'll actually start to bubble. It's getting liquid on the surface. So that's plenty hot right there to bend. We shut the torch off, acetylene, oxygen, and I can set this down. Yeah, yeah. I might need my leverage bar here, but I'm going to put that right in the middle. Go ahead and pull that. Oh, I got a 90 degree bend. Now, just to give you an idea of what the heat does, okay? If I go to the other mark, right there is where we want our bend. I'll get it parallel. I cannot pull it. <laughs> so, heat is awesome, what it can do, okay? And it really didn't deform it too much. You can see it kind of necked or stretched down. I might have gone like a half degree over. And a harder surface. That's close. Anyway, we would want to quench this before we grab onto it. That might seem like common sense, but don't walk around with this. This would brand somebody right now. So throw it in a pail, let it cool. Flip it over, we'll heat it up again, same process. When you're done with the, hang on, let's go over this quick. I'm going to set this, actually, Vincent, you want to punch that? Right here, we're going to finish this up. When you're done with the torch, proper way to shut it down. Shut the tanks off. Open the valves. Keep an eye on these right here. That one bled out, now up here I'll bleed this one out. Bleed all the excess air out. Then dial these back so there's no air flowing through them. Wrap up the cords and you're done, okay? And see.